and welcome back to my studio. Thank you all so much for being here with me today. For today's video, I have a few different projects that I'm working on, but they all have to do with jessamonite or eco resin. So I have been using a lot of jessamonite recently as I'm getting ready for maker markets. I wanted some cute little things that I can put out on tables uh, that are fairly easy to make and not time consuming. And this fits the bill completely. I, I really like using this. You can completely unmold in 30 minutes. So even if you only have a few molds, you can create a lot of product fairly quickly versus a traditional clear style epoxy resin where you're looking at a minimum of four hours to demolding. Uh, this is a lot less fussy to work with. So it's it's been a lot of fun. Now I have several different projects for you today so that I can show you a bunch of different techniques, but I'm also going to be taking you from mixing to pouring to demolding and finishing. So this is going to be a really comprehensive video. Now to get started, I want to talk a little bit about the product. So for today's video, I'm using Jesmonite, um, the brand, and it's a little expensive and harder to get here in the States. So I've been testing out some other products. Another product I've started using is this Eco Resin Plaster from Decorom. Decor um, the idea behind these is it's a gypsum base. So it's a, a plaster, a Paris sort of base, but they've added polymers in, so it's a lot stronger than your traditional plaster of Paris. So it holds up much better, it's not so fragile, and it's just a better product, I think, for this sort of, of um, option. Uh, the Jesmonite comes with a powder and a liquid a lot of these other eco resins I've found are just the powder and you add water. So read the directions. Each of them is going to have a little different mixing ratio. So go with that. And what I do when I've got a bunch of stuff started is I go ahead and get my powder and my, uh, sorry, my powder and my fluid ready, whether it's uh, the fluid that comes with the jesmonite or water for the eco resin. And I have several different containers set up so that I can kind of go quickly through this whole process and not have to stop every time to weigh and, and whatnot. And that's another important thing is you do want to weigh this out. That's how all of these instructions are. It's not by volume, it is by weight. So make sure you have a scale on hand. So for the jesmonite, um, I have a thousand grams of powder in here by weight. And then I have 400 grams of the liquid by weight. Now I do add a little bit of extra water just to make it a little more fluid. The jesmonite tends to be thicker than the other eco resins I've been using. So I do thin it down just a little bit and I haven't had any issues with curing or strength or anything like that. So I'm gonna change the angle of the camera so you can see what I'm doing and we'll get down to mixing. Okay, so the first one I'm gonna show you are these votive holders that have this kind of organic edge to them. In one set of molds, I'm using this crushed black gravel. And then in the other set of molds, I'm using gold. And I'm just pouring it around the sides, leaving it higher in some areas than others. Same thing with these guys. 
Here I have gold leaf. And what you'll see me doing is I'm putting it on rather coarsely and I'm kind of just um, pouncing it in, I guess might be a good word, because what I'm hoping to do is to create some um, texture in this as well so that I get kind of little craters, if that makes sense. I hope that does. Okay, now it's time to mix. First off, I've done kind of a guesstimate of how much I'm gonna need to fill all of these pieces. If I have a little extra, I do have some molds off to the side here that I can grab quickly to fill up. I like to mix my dry into my wet and I have my just little studio cordless drill. This is a super cheapy and I've attached uh, the whisk attachment from my hand mixer in my kitchen. Now, I wasn't using this whisk, so I decided to bring it up to my studio. If you use this, don't take it back to your kitchen, okay? Um, that being said, you could use your hand mixer as well, but again, any attachments that you use to mix this, don't ever use this for food again. And you can use a hand whisk. What I wouldn't suggest using is a stick or something like that. It's really hard to get the clumps out if you're not using a whisk, whether it's a manual style or using something electric. And I like to do just a little at a time. Here I am just splitting up my jasmineite into a few different containers so I can do different colors. And it's really important to note that you need to use a pigment that is made for jasmineite or eco resin or gypsum. Because it's going into this very opaque uh, product, you can't use like alcohol inks or things like that. It's, you're just not going to get the vibrancy of color that you want or the depth of color. So I will add in some links below for the colors I use. Unfortunately, all the really good products I find are coming from like the UK. So it is a little bit of cost to pay for shipping, but I think they are a much, much higher quality product than anything that I'm finding here in the States at the moment. And then the other thing I wanted to point out that besides when I'm mixing in a particularly large quantity, like I have this bucket, I am always using silicone uh, vessels to hold. And that's because it's going to make it far, far easier to clean up. And the last little thing I wanted to remind you guys of is that this has a very short working time. So you really have to keep moving with this. Unlike traditional clear epoxy resin where you have, you know, sometimes 30 minutes, sometimes an hour or more of working time, you really only have about 15 minutes of working time with this product before it just gets too solid to pour.
I'm a long, long way from home It's a long, long road I'm on And the angels hear me cry Sing me a lullaby A lullaby There's a picture I'm going to show you a couple of different things. Now for the wet bucket, you want to clean that up with water and paper towel right away. It's going to be really hard to get this stuff out after it cures. And then for my silicone cups, I'm going to do that cleanup after it cures. And you'll see here how easily that chips out. And that's why I always like to use silicone as much as possible when I'm working with jessamonite or eco resin. Now, I started doing these a little before they were fully, fully cured. I should have waited another 10 or 15 minutes, but you can see it comes out pretty easily. Anything that doesn't come out super easily, you'll see there's some little crumbs left inside the cups. I can wipe that out with a wet paper towel as well. All of these little chips that I'm saving, or that I'm getting out of these cups, I'm gonna save these because I can use these for a terrazzo style effect later. And I'm just breaking them up into little chips so that they're easy to store and use for later. Here we are with the unmolding. Let's start with the gold foil. Sweep some of that extra away. I really like that. I'm not sure. I must have dropped some of the dark in there and not realized it. But that is beautiful. And I love these little crevices. I'm, I like how that turned out. Now that is stunning. Can't wait to wax that. That's gonna be beautiful. Here we are with the opal. I hope that is showing up subtle, on which I really like. Absolutely beautiful though. There we go. There we go. Really cool. Love that. You can see that sparkle. I love that kind of raw, broken edge. Very cool. Hmm. Okay, I'm hoping with a little bit of sanding that that's going to show up more. Interesting, just the same. Spring rain. 
trout and hummingbird. Here we are with the next step after we demold. Now I like to let my projects build up so that I can do a bunch of them at once. And I have this belt sander. Now you do not need a belt sander. This is what I use to make my life simpler when I'm doing, you know, sometimes a hundred pieces at a time. So if you just want to hand sand, you are more than welcome to just hand sand. But the Belt sander will make really quick work of this if you're wanting to do it a little, little more of a production style. And you can see it really does just take a couple of seconds per piece and it, uh, you'll get that little ridge off the bottom really easily, really quickly, and it's really soft. Now you can finish these with cork or some sort of felt foot, but I find with the jesmonite and eco resins, they're so soft, you don't really have to. I'm not worried about this scratching up my furniture or anything like that. And just a real quick tip for really thin pieces where it might be hard to hold onto the sides. If you just slide it against that back stop um, and use your hand to slide it on, I don't let my fingers over the edge. I have no problems doing that safely. with the uh, ceiling portion of this video. So I'm using Clark's Stone and Concrete. This is a really great product. It's uh, food contact safe and it will make this very water resistant. Not quite waterproof, but definitely water resistant. Um, I've seen people use coconut oil. That seems to add a lovely shine, but this is what I'm working with today. I've got a soft sponge. And I have a little bit here that I warmed up in the microwave only because it's really cold in my studio today. So that's what I'm working for. But this is this. So you need, you don't need a lot. And I'm hoping that this is going to show you how the color changes. You see how much richer this side looks than this side? Hope that shows up. So you just put a thin coat on. I'm gonna set this aside for about 10 minutes. While I do that, I'm gonna work on more and then we'll start with buffing. And now it's time to buff. This is sat for about 10 minutes. And a couple of options here. You can take a dry, just lint-free cloth and just give it a good polish. Try to get rid of any excess wax that you can. Now, because I'm doing so many pieces at once and I have about 50 pieces that I'm working on today, I got these great little buffing pads that just attached to my cordless grill cordless drill and they also have this like soft spongy thing to make it uh, even more moldable. buff all of these that I just finished waxing and then we'll move on to the next step. So now I 
have all of my pieces buffed. And now it's time to do the second coat. So I'm just going to repeat that process. I'm going to add my wax, get it on there, put it aside, let it set for 10 minutes, and then I'm gonna buff it again. So now I have everything buffed twice. And I wanted to show you a couple of side-by-side -side comparisons. So these are the same technique, same color, poured at the same time. Hopefully the video is picking up how much richer this is than this. Here's another good example. You can see how much darker this one looks than this one. Here we are with the final products. These have gone through two full rounds of buffing. They've sat for a little while. These are ready to go. These are gonna be perfect for selling at markets. They make great gifts. These sort of jars can be used to fill with candle wax if you make candles. Um, got these great little votive candles holders. Absolutely love those. Look how rich that color is. I hope you can see that. I also have these cool little bud vases or propagation vases. Yeah, these are all just really great pieces and you can make them in a pretty minimal amount of time with a minimal amount of expense. So they're a good uh, product if you want something that doesn't take up a lot of space to create and you can kind of just sit on repeat. Oh, okay. If you have any questions, put them in the description below. I hope you guys have a beautiful day.